Well, I wanted to know if it was the, well, I'm getting back to OTAs. You know, just how you know, uh, you know, this is the end of OTAs. Uh, what you know? Well, it's not. I mean, next week to, to answer your question, all seriousness. Next week we have the mandatory minute camp, which is good. You get the physicals on guys, but it'll be the exact same structure. It's not like you can put the pads on. Uh, it'll be the exact teaching, development. Guys are doing a good job. We have had some speed in seven on seven, and and things are things we're doing as a team. We're not in full contact. Again, I don't know if you saw this when you were on vacation, but another team got in trouble for contact. That's not what we're about here. We're trying to build up and make sure we're ready to go going in the summer, so we can be full throttle starting July 26. So the next week's format is very similar to what you've seen today or what you guys have seen in the past. Yes, sir. We'll use all three days. Uh, we won't use the same format, like struck, you know, day to day. We may do something on Thursday. It won't be any kind of surprise, but um, we won't do anything ridiculous. Uh, so teams use like more of the last days of like team building. Sure, I mean a team building more to me. It's more hey appreciation. Building, we, we did a team building exercise, quick funny story. Um, not to call LaRon Angel, we did a paintball as a defense in 07, and he got hurt. He got, um, got hit in a spot and actually missed the minicamp. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm allowed to say and what's not, but uh, comical. Luckily, he was all right. So I've always stayed away from paintball so nobody gets hurt doing any kind of team activity. All right, D-Lab, what else you got? Can we get the, the red helmet comment? Because that was pretty absurd. Yeah, well, that's that. Yeah, that's the whole history on that. Yeah, I mean, it didn't hurt Pittsburgh, right? They wore the uh, 19 yeah, teams. Well, in the 62, when they when they won, uh, they did not win, right? Um, they wore the yellow helmets, and I think they changed in 19, after 1962. Chuck Noll got there in 1969. I don't remember their money before that. Certainly didn't hurt them in 07 or 08, 09. I'd have to ask Mike Tomlin if that really impeded their Super Bowl progress, wearing a helmet of a bygone era. It's not going to help us win. It's not going to help us lose. If we didn't have marketing, this game wouldn't be where it was today. With a good product, NFL films, we wouldn't all be rewarded with the jobs that we have. Next question. Good question. Do you find mini camps a lot more productive than, say, an OTA? I mean, what can you do in a mini camp that you can't do in an OTA? It doesn't matter. It's not any different. It was the way the rules were. I mean, some people would – in the past, may have you know tried to do some more competitive things in a mini camp, you know, uh, but where we're we at in today's climate, uh, we're not going to do that. It, it, our guys are doing a really good job. A lot of stuff we're doing, not only on the field but off the field in the classroom, strength and, and, and development, strength training and development. Um, pleased with the progress. We know we got a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, so no. So it's not like you can get your messaging across any better or anything. It's know? a build up. It's a slow drip every day. We work on messaging every day. Uh, it's not going to be someone win one for the Gipper speech on Tuesday or Wednesday. It's a constant message. I mean, people want to talk about culture and things you want to cultivate. You got to you got to work on that every day. Do you have win one for the Gipper speech? I may give you one. It depends. Maybe D. Led can give me a topic, and I'll get you guys one. Uh, Power I football. I know, I know you said uh, a couple weeks ago, whatever it was, there were three players who were off-season stuff who were not going to be doing any. Yeah, be, 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 yeah, and those guys won't be out on the field. I mean, it's not like all of a sudden I anticipate everybody being ready to go by camp um, other than you know, we'll have to assess. I, I say that with, a, with, with an asterisk. You know, guys that are – we'll see where they're at, you know, Isaiah Oliver, John Fitzpatrick, but everybody else that had things cleaned up, I would anticipate, again, there's a lot of unknown. You know, guys are out of here for five weeks. Um, I would anticipate everybody being ready to go by camp. Can't practice next week or be on the field next week. Be here. Yes. Camp. Yes, they will. So you don't anticipate no, no. no shows. No, I do not. If there's a surprise or something he's not, well, I'd, I'd be happy to let y'all know. When you're using what you see now, what you see next week, in evaluation, like, do you does this count the same to you as when you're evaluating, say, quarterback or maybe some of these roster spots? Like, is it that thing where every rep matters or? Once camp starts, is that way? Is that way? I don't really do matters. I mean, you have a purpose while you're out here. It's just a different evaluation. A lot more of it right now is mentally. You know, you're just building it up. I mean, everybody learns different different ways, and the act of doing is the best way to learn any, for anybody. You know, whether you know there's certain things that we do. You know, we're trying to get. You know, that's why you do seven on seven, or, or when you're when you're working it, you don't have a line, so the pockets. You know, that's not a fair evaluation. You know, from apples to apples. You know, what applies to a game and what doesn't. Because certainly they know they don't get hit in practice, and they certainly they don't they don't feel anything at their feet. You could try to simulate that stuff with some uh, different props, but it's not the same. 
but it's just part of the build-up process, and that's why I get excited about the preseason games, uh, joint practices, and the build-up to the, to the regular season. Is, is there something too like when you have, say, most of the rookies working with like kind of their peers, I guess we'll call it, and then you have a guy like Drake working maybe with some of the more vets? Is that just? We've done it. We've mixed and matched. I mean, you've seen some days, and whether we've done it with the DBs or the receivers, uh, maybe there's certain things we've installed, or we want to we want to give everybody a chance to, to work with all the quarterbacks. Or I think that's important. That certainly um, pays off throughout the year. You know, when you're dealing with injuries and different guys up, as we get closer season, yeah, like you know, you get your line that you think is going to be out there. You're not trying to rotate them all every day, and the guys that are kind of separate themselves from the pack, they'll take more first team reps. But I've never got a problem if a, if a position coach wants to reward a guy or they have a good rhyme or reason to mix and match personnel groups. I did paint for you, by the way. I did really well. I, I think I uh, – I can't remember. I may have been the last out with either Sean Springs or Fred Smoot. I can't remember. I think I got Smoot. I think I did. <laughs> Again, it's been a while. Charles. You good, Charles? Okay. Me? There, uh, there's lots of new faces at, at that inside uh, linebacker group with Evans and Kukowski. Mm -hmm. right? and, uh, Just get quit. Troy, quit. quit. And, uh, like, how are, those, how are those guys coming along uh, uh, mentally and kind of learning those Yeah, things? they're doing a good job. Uh, like I said, I've said it many times, and uh, all those guys in there. And there's, it's it's, it's going to be a tough group um, to make decisions on, really. To be, to, to be frank, assuming you know they keep progressing, and we think they will. But what it also does is give you an opportunity. If a lot of guys can help you, you can create different personnel packages. Just like we do on offense, Dean does a great job on defense. And uh, if a guy's a good player, we'll find a role for him. When you, uh, when you have a completely new, you have a couple of position groups that the room's almost completely. Yeah. Different. How does that differ in terms of how you approach this versus one? maybe that where you have three or four guys who worked here last year. Is there a difference in approach or is there a difference in, in how that goes? I mean, there's a difference in approach. I think what you want to make sure is you never get stale. I mean, that's the thing. That's why you give guys credit that can play year after year at a high level because it is competition. And I understand, understand guys that are compensated differently and there's an expectation when you're compensated. But at the end of the day, you've got to earn a job. And if a guy's playing better than somebody else, you better have the backbone to play the better player and, and I and I get the different dynamics. But if you do have experience in a room and it's guys that you value, you would hope that they you may not have to you'd hope they, they, they can lead the room a little bit better. And maybe the you know the position coach doesn't have to he can adapt, you know, year to year, phase to phase. Um, but the approach is the same. You want competition, you want to hold guys accountable and you want to improve. Can a second year guy like Ali theoretically do that or does, do you almost in terms of what? You talking about like leadership or are you talking about leadership or, or when you're building that room because in the edge rusher room he's really the only holdover from a year Yeah, ago. I mean you got different experiences. I mean Zoe, Lorenzo, I mean he's he's played a lot of meaningful snaps in the in the NFL and Ade, you know, he's, there's just guys continue to learn year after year, but there's probably some experiences he can pass down to D'Angelo and and uh, Arnold Abacati where, you know, hey, this is what I went through as a rookie. I, but in terms of leadership, I think that naturally happens. You know, when guys are productive and they got good habits and, you know, it's – I think the locker room, you know, really, really – the true locker room separates who's really a leader, not who gets posted on Instagram or, you know, who has a good PFF rating or uh, number of Twitter followers or Instagram, whatever. I know you're just kind of like ramping things up in OTAs, but has there been anyone that's come in that's maybe – Impressed you with how they've been in shape, or anything that's done anything in OTAs that's really stood out to you so far? Yeah, there's been several guys. Um, you know, pleased with both both the quarterbacks, what Marcus and, and Desmond are doing, and Felipe. He's still working in the room. Felipe is a valuable football player for us, and he'll take some reps at quarterback. But I put Felipe, you know, in that hybrid category. Um, yeah, Demir Bird, or Hodge, those guys. That, that, you know, in this setting, again, we got a long way to go. I've been impressed with them, the guys I hadn't worked with before. Um, I like Fetty's work habits, what he's shown so far. Again, we're not in real pads. Um, there's been several guys that have, that have started uh, that you notice. Dean Marlowe. Um, so it, it's hard with the front guys, but guys, you know, you, you just you appreciate their approach every day. Terry said in a radio interview the other day that the final 53 
he doesn't think or hear right now that there's going to be some changes. How much? How many changes, or do you expect changes you oh. know, once teams start? Yeah, I think it depends. You know, some things that are you may intentionally try to do that can be out of your control. I've never subscribed to your 53 set. Like, we're not going to have a, some pizza party at the final cutdown day, and hey, here it is. Everybody, here's your scholarship for 2022. It doesn't work that way. You're continually trying to add. And we, as you guys saw last year, we found value uh, during the season. And, and that's why I appreciate our football staff. And, you know, you, some years you may have been more active than others, and there may be an opportunity that comes across, you know, some. some well, I like to say some trends, uh, some trades could be a win-win. Like you hope the Brian Edwards trade doesn't always have to be zero sum. Like happy to work with the Raiders, and hopefully it's a good situation. Brian's a good player and fits maybe what we're trying to do right now. And so, but you never know; those things come across, and they, you may not be anticipating. And somebody calls, and you're gonna you're gonna always look. So I I just, I, I just never look at the roster ever being set ever. Do do, do teams around the league look at? OTAs in many camps and think, okay, I don't know if we have what we thought we have here. Let's go out and get somebody. Not necessarily you, but yeah, I think so. I think teams do. I mean, I think everybody, you know, I mean, everybody's so optimistic this time of year. I think they've got a great 90, 90 person roster. I think uh, you evaluate it depends. You try not to overreact in spring. Uh, I've seen that before. You put labels on guys, you just call it the king of spring, and then they disappear. You put pads on. So I try to be objective, but. Yeah, I think I think that's pretty common. So you wouldn't be surprised if we would be getting phone calls here between now and training camp. Or yeah, it's, it, and that happens, and that's really pretty common. Uh, but in my experience uh, with the personnel guys, those guys talk all the time. You know, they, they talk to each other, and uh, it's a pretty standard opportunity. I think it's – I don't know. And, again, I'm not trying to be a smart aleck D-led, but I don't know how much the, the GNs of yesteryear used to talk, but I think guys today talk a lot more. Do. Okay, see, there you go. And last, last one on this, even with cap issues that you guys may have, potentially there could be players cut from other teams that would fit into what you would Absolutely, yeah. yeah it's, those are things you don't know, and it happens, and you, you take a look at it and um, hope they can improve your team. You said you feel like this is a build-up OTAs and minicamp, but what, in your opinion, makes a successful OTAs? Well, I think you, a couple of things. You, you feel better at the end, which we do, and we get a couple more opportunities um, coming up. But you would have that people underst have a better understanding of, of how you want to play that year, your, your playbook, your insulation, and, and what kind of shape they're in. And I think that that's what you can evaluate. And you hope that we've improved since we started on April 19th. And so that, that's where you kind of measure progress. Um, let me, I have a couple questions for you. Let me sure. just start off with the football question. Um, so we keep talking about the fresh faces, the younger team, but I was talking to Dean Pease a couple weeks ago and he was saying how, uh, I asked him how much more comfortable he is, right? Because now you guys are going into year two. Mm -hmm. And he said, now I feel like we can just go without thinking, without teaching. So I'm, I want to know about your coaching staff and do you feel that? Do you feel like they as a whole are more comfortable? Yeah, I do. Um, I, I think, you know, we've, we're, we're constantly looking to improve our staff as well, and guys have other opportunities. Like Chandler Henley, he had an opportunity in Miami that, that I wasn't going to block him, which, which could have been a lateral, you know, perceived a lateral move. But um, so opportunity for other guys. But, but most part, we got mo most of the coaches back, and it just helps more communication. It's like building a team in some aspects. Uh, the rhythm of it and me, what can I do better? Guys have a better understanding of what that maybe I'm asking. We haven't worked together before, and or you haven't been worked together in a couple of years and same thing with Dean and, and Marquise and Dave. So I do. Um, that's what makes year two for me a little, a little better, at least at this point of the year.